We've seen how to specify the conditions of a query, how to retrieve only the records that match a certain criteria. But there are also three other query methods that are important to being able to find exactly the records we want. Order, limit, and offset. Order is going to specify the sort order of the returned records. Do we want them sorted alphabetically, reverse alphabetically, sorted by ID, or sorted by position? Order lets us do that. Limit is going to limit the results that are returned. It becomes especially important when we have a lot of records that match our conditions. Let's say we have a database of 20,000 customers. We wouldn't want to see all 20,000 customers at once. We'd probably want to see them in pages, maybe 20 at a time. So we would limit the results to 20. Of course, if we want to view page 51, we still only want to get 20 records back, but we also need to skip over the first 1,000 records that are on the previous 50 pages. Well, Offset lets us do that. Offset lets us skip over records before choosing which results to return. So the combination of these with conditions is going to help us get the right records. Order, Limit, and Offset are also part of the new Active Relation query methods. And as I mentioned when we were looking at conditions, the previous query methods are going to be deprecated in Rails 3.1 and removed completely in 3.2. Here's an example of what the syntax looked like, just so that you can see it. Subject find all, and then a hash with all these values. We could also have conditions as one of the key value pairs in the hash, just like we saw in the last movie. Instead, we'll have standalone query methods, order with an SQL fragment, limit with an integer, and offset with an integer. All three of these are essentially the same thing and take the same kinds of arguments that they took before. They're just standalone active relation query methods. One of the nice things about that is that we can chain them together. So for example, the new query syntax would look something like this, subject.order, position, ascending, dot limit 20, dot offset 40. That would give us the same results as the old query methods that you see there in the second bullet point. Now I think limit and offset are pretty self-explanatory. It's just a simple integer. How many records do we want is limit, and offset is how many records do we want to skip over before returning that set number of records. Order, though, I think it deserves a little more explanation because it's going to use an SQL fragment. So let's talk a moment about the order SQL syntax and make sure that that's clear. The format for it is the table name, period, and then the column name with a space followed by either ASC or DESC. That's the full format. If we were going to specify everything, we would specify all three of those. Now, if we're working with only a single table, then we can just leave off table name. It's going to know what table we're talking about. We saw that in the previous slide when we asked for position. If we don't specify a direction, either ascending, meaning 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or A, B, C, D, E, F, G, then it will default to ascending. I think it's a good practice to always go ahead and put ascending or descending in there just to make sure that it's very clear. Let's talk for a moment about table disambiguation. That's a fancy way of saying Let's make sure that SQL knows what tables we're referring to. If we're working with a single table, it's not necessary to disambiguate which column on which table you're talking about. We know which table it is. But when we start joining tables together and writing more complex queries and having queries that cross over different relationships from subjects to pages to sections, well then it starts becoming less clear which table we're talking about. In that case, it's a good idea to go ahead and include the table name table name dot position ascending. And whenever those tables have the same column name, like position, then it's required. In that case, we really have to, because otherwise SQL will say, well, I see a couple of different position columns, and I'm not sure which one you want me to sort on. So in that case, we definitely have to disambiguate the table. Table disambiguation applies to when you write SQL for your condition statements too, but it comes up there a little less frequently. The place that it will cause you problems most often is in the order SQL. So let's see a couple of examples. So we saw subjects.position ascending. We also could have subjects.name descending. That's going to be reverse alphabetical order. Or we can combine two together with a comma. So subjects visible descending. That's going to put the visible subjects first and the not visible subjects second. The reason why that is is because visible is a true or false. Well, false is zero. True is equal to one. So therefore, it's going to sort the ones before the zero when we do descending order. And then after it gets done sorting those, then all the visible ones will be sorted in alphabetical order, followed by all the not visible ones sorted in alphabetical order. So that's how we can combine those together. Let's try a couple of these real quick. You'll see that I'm already inside the root of my Rails app, and I've already launched my Rails console. Let's do subjects equals subject dot where visible is true. I'm going to use my where statement, followed by order by position ascending. So 
there it is. Now we get them in ascending order. Let's just try descending. And now they're in reverse order. Position two is the first one. That returned only the visible ones. If we do the same thing, but do limit one, you'll see that we get back just the first result. Notice that it's still an array. It didn't return to us actually the first one, and that's an important difference. Limit one is not the same thing as saying dot first. Limit one says only get one result back, but it treats it just like it was limit 10, limit 20. The way it behaves is the same. It returns an array of however many you asked for. And let's go ahead and say offset one, and guess what? Now it skips over the first one and returns me position one. So now it skipped over subject ID number two, and it returned to me subject ID number one. Look back up here at this array if it's not clear. That's what would happen if we weren't using limit and offset. So we're limiting to one, but we're offsetting one. So that jumps to the next one. Now, I think that it's most common that people specify the order, something like this, where followed by order followed by limit and offset. But you don't have to. It doesn't matter what order they are. It's all going to get bunched together into one SQL query at the end. So if you want to specify the limit first and then specify the where clause, there's no problem with doing that. And just to show you an example of the table disambiguation I was talking about, so here we would put in subjects.position, and that would be the actual table name that we're using here, the name that MySQL has for its table, subjects.position. And that just makes sure that it's very clear which table and which column we're referring to.